Welcome, it's Documentation Office Hours. This is the 4th of August. Thanks for being here. Topics on the list include Google Summer of Code, Open Pull Requests of Interest, DevOps World Tour, and possibly canceling the meeting August 18th. Any other topics you'd like to add, Chris? Uh, no. Okay, so let's talk to Google Summer of Code first. Uh, version documentation for Jenkins.io. So as I understand it, Vandi will do a demo. Demo the, the status at UX SIG the 14th of August. Is that right? 16th. August 16th. Yep. Great. Now, I apologize. I won't be there. I'm out of the office that day. But okay. congratulations. That's great. How's it going? What, do you want to show us a demo? Do, should I let you share the screen? Um, maybe not today because like there's still some issues with the facts because I, okay. I still chase Vendy to complete like all of it before we do that. All right, no problem. Because yeah, I think there's still some broken links to the best of my understanding, but not not sure. Okay. There's still some imperfections. Great. So let's see, Ash, if I look at Van Dietz, that's here, if I remember right. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. And so here's 2.1 and 2. Okay, so so versioned is working. Yeah. Good, very good. And edit this page takes me to his page. Nice. And still the much better expansion and contraction on the left. Yeah. But I do have some questions about like um what we should do regarding current existing versions because we have to accommodate all of them up to where so when, you, you, when you say existing versions you mean what should be in the pick list here yeah 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 oh see and I would think we only we would say only baseline of LTS versions would be my assumption. Okay. And maybe then only the most recent one now, just do 2.401 and okay. call that good enough. And then when 2.414 releases, we could create a create a snapshot or create a branch for 2.414. But I wouldn't mm -hmm. I wouldn't do more than anything finer grained than than the long-term support releases. Okay, cool. Understood. Yeah. It's a good question. So, and that's certainly a good question to ask in the uh, sh how many versions should be in the documentation in the list of versions, or maybe we say it this way: which versions should be in the list of versions? Right. Yep. And my thought was, Mark thinks. LTS baseline, so 2.401.1, 2.414.1, dot, dot, dot. Or maybe it's 2.401.1 represented by 2.401.x. Okay, yeah. You know, that's... That, that's that's the concept. Dot one is probably more accurate because we'll certainly take the snapshot We'll create the branch at the dot one branch, but okay. it'd be understandable to say, okay, dot X, uh, that would be fine with me either way. Okay. So I, weekly seems too frequent and won't have many changes between, wouldn't have, would not have many changes between branches. Okay. Because we're not. We're not evolving that quickly. And if we look at, at command line Git, they release every three months. And when yeah. they release every three months, their, their documentation has, let's see, let's go look at the reference. So here's one. Yeah, they do, they do, oh, they they do ev they do even their dot releases. So they do even dot dot two compared to two dot thirty seven dot zero interesting i'm i still think lts baseline would be enough meg yeah. 
what what we're discussing here is this is Vandit Singh's Google Summer of Code project proposing to rework the Jenkins documentation so that the user handbook is versioned. So the number up here in the top right hand corner, the 2.1, let's make it big enough to read, the two point run here in the top right would become 2.401.1 and 2.2 .2 would be 2.414.1 so that it matches with the long-term support version numbers. The, uh, the thing we're trying to match is something like what command line git does with their documentation that is has versioned pages for their documentation so i can always go back and see what was 2.25 actually doing so question meg for you is do you think it would be okay if we just limited this to the long-term support version so that it won't change more than about once every three months Oh, you're muted, Meg. Shoot, there. Can you hear me now? Yes. I'd be comfortable with that. I mean, we don't we don't have that many changes, right? That correct. Um and it's I'm thinking that in the vast majority of the cases, the changes to the docs for release aren't related to software that changes. Right. That they're just improvements. So yeah, that's it's always, I mean, it's a temptation to be really, really precise about it, but also that becomes mind boggling that I, you know, it's a lot really easier to remember 2.1, 2.2 versus 2.138.3, you know, or something, the longer numbers. Right. Well, and my worry is if this, if this menu has 150 entries in it, the, the, the reader will get lost, right? They, right. it's just too many. And already with four a year can if we if we were to do all of them we should not i think we should just start where we are but okay. if we were to do all of them we would have lts's what that would be 10 years at four per year so this would be a 40 entry 40 entry menu so that that would still be a very large menu and okay. to look at gits theirs is probably 20 already yeah. Yeah. I'm thinking we should cap the number of versions available on the drop down to. Ah, uh, that's probably another good idea. Well, and and I like their pattern here. I oh, is this one? No, I thought I'd seen some version documentation sites where they'll give you a, we'll show you the first five and then give you a more link or something like that. Uh, yeah. Okay. Now you are looking at the reference stuff, essentially man pages. What is it? They've got a book thing. What are they? Ah, uh, there. So the book actually is a real book. And so that one, I'm not sure they do. It's this is this is a representation of a published book. Oh, okay. And so it's this is a physical book that they that, for whose source code is intentionally open source. So they actually do not have like how to they don't now have guides as part of their documentation they have the reference well they've they've got the book and the book the book is and the book is very much a how-to right but i mean it's a published book it's not like online well it, it's also available online right you can get it as right. epub or pdf or read it here but it's not being updated with each new release uh yeah well right now it's on its second edition so so yeah there is the book is has had had multiple revisions and I assume every every so often so right now it's oh it says it's 2014 that's pretty badly dated in the world of git yeah yeah they've so made major improvements since then but I see that I mean that's that's an old theory that I subscribe to you do these reference things and those you keep up to date also because it's a fairly small effort if you add an argument or you know rename those you know you can do that pretty quickly it's not like rewriting prose right um, it's very clear and so this is if you really need to know the up-to-date stuff you go to the reference and then the other is conceptual get the big picture and and that certainly matches the book is very much conceptual here and the the reference materials are are very detailed uh-huh as they should be okay good all right so uh, so Meg agrees. 
that LTS baseline is enough. Thus, four times per year, which will still, and then recommended, or is there a way that we can cap the number of releases initially displayed? Well, not just initially displayed, we're assuming that the world goes on. Right, okay. So, I mean, if, if we say no more than four releases, what have we got for now? We're gonna say we're gonna do four releases now. What are we gonna have in a year and a half from now? Does yeah. Mean, and, and so, gonna have, are we gonna, as we add a release, are we gonna take one off? I assumed, kind of I assumed sense. that, oh, go ahead. Oh, no, I'm done. So Mark assumed keep all the versions available, but only show a subset in the menu. Mm -hmm. um, allow a more or something like that. Now, no idea if that's even possible in Antora. I don't know how what how Antora thinks about this. Uh, Chris, do you have any idea what does Antora do with regard to many versions? Mm, not sure. Probably have to do something manual. Okay. Great. Any other topics or questions on the version documentation for Jenkins.io? That is a concern. Actually, I would put in as we go through implementation to keep an eye out for how much of this becomes a manual effort. Because it seems to me it's the sort of thing that really needs to be pretty much automated, or maybe that changes how much you do it. Well, so when you say say manual effort, I'm assuming uh, Chris, maybe you can you can certainly help. I've missed the the presentations by Vandi with vacation and whatnot. Is is it dependent on just a branch, and then it will build everything from that branch? So two dot one in this example is a different branch than 2.2 is? I think so, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. So no. Meg, I think, I think to answer your question, how manual is it? It's easy to create a new branch. We just get, get checkout minus B of the branch and then push it to the central repository and probably add an entry in some configuration file that says read from this branch in addition. Yeah. What I would love to have, but I don't think this is reasonable, is a star for a release where this document changed from the last release. Ah, uh, okay. So so some indication of I mean, I have one of these things that doesn't get rewritten for five years, you know, just to uh -huh. know that at this this thing changed at this you now. Yeah, and, and I don't know if Antora's got such a concept. I've We've we've intentionally been guiding Vandi to stay, or at least I think the guidance has been stay with Antora base functionality where we can. Which makes okay. sense. Yeah. And Sorry, Chris, go ahead. I think uh we may be possible. It, the, the feature, mm -hmm. I think I asked us to next to mm -hmm. the latest version might be possible. But we need to investigate. So Is it, yeah, possible and worth the effort. Yeah, okay. I think it's worth it. I mean, it should be if you've got it in different branches. A diff would give you the information, but yeah. Yeah, I think it's possible. I mean, that'd be nice. I mean, it'd be handy for Mark to open up and look and see, you know, and then you could see that something has not changed for the last four LTS releases. And you know something about what's been in the releases, and you're like, why has that not changed? Okay. Yeah. Good. All right. Good suggestion. Cool stuff. Anything else on that topic, Chris? Um, probably not much, except for the fact that Vented still has exams, so we have to wait until he comes back maybe next week. So ah, okay. So, so Vandit's offline also this this week. Great. Yeah. That means I. All right. No problem. Very good. So. We continue then. I mean, it it looks it looks very attractive. 
what's your sense is it is there any hope that it's going to be ready for merge at the end of the project or more likely there's going to be a lot of work yet to do i think i think it might be possible it depends on um then this schedule because i'm i'm kind of worried like there might be some like uh, some other like um, integration issues that may crop up towards the actual implementation got it okay great thank you thanks very much okay Oh, no, I had missed that we have build status. I need to remember that. That glossary entry is a good thing. Good. Okay. So we've talked about version documentation. Docker Compose for tutorials. Mm, that I was, I was hoping as your talk should show up, but it hasn't. So. Well, so we did a demonstration last week with Ashutosh for 45 minutes. Okay. And uh, then I saw a demonstration. Uh, a five minute demo or a yeah, demo today from Bruno Verachten. And he'll do another demo. Bruno will, will do a more detailed demo in Office Hours Europe next okay. week. So cool. it's it's okay. looking it's looking quite good. I was I was thoroughly impressed when we worked with it last week. Meg, what was your sense from being involved in that demo? No, Meg may have slipped off. Okay, so I was I was really very pleased. It's it's now. I'm sorry, I muted myself because I was being noisy. Ah. Uh, no, I thought it was very very nicely done. I was impressed, and the way he presented it, it was. Yeah, I just to to give a to give an indication. So I've got to show the thing that I just went through about thirty minutes ago to to test drive a change of version in one of our tutorials. So let's go look at this tutorial. Here's the Python tutorial right here. Click, click, click. So in this Python tutorial on my Linux thing, first thing I had to do was paste this command, then paste this command, then scroll down and paste this content to a file, then paste this command, and then paste this command. Okay, so you can see that there's this long, horrible experience for the user, copy and paste an awful lot of stuff and keep track so you don't skip something. Right, don't skip, don't miss a line, et cetera. And finally, after all that, you've reached the post-install wizard. Well, what, what Bruno's and Ashutosh's work has done, so what Ashutosh's work has done is, has changed this whole terrible thing into three commands, git clone, cd, docker compose up. Oh, okay. And it's that simple. And and now inside the Docker Compose, it's actually running two Docker containers. It creates a dedicated Jenkins agent that's used for with the tool for the particular demo. So in or for the particular tutorial. So in this case, because it's a Python tutorial, the agent has Python installed on it. The cool. controller runs no jobs. So big win because this one, this demo, actually relies on running jobs on the controller. Yeah. That's wow. not good. Do as we say, not as we do. Yeah. Right, exactly. This the Docker Compose thing takes away some of the shame that we have hiding in this thing. Okay. So any any questions there? I am yeah. I am I am truly pleased with how it's going, and uh, so well, I was impressed last week because because Mark was playing with it and he kind of tried to break it. He was tried to do some things. I think he was ready to explain to him. He's like, "Oh, that works." So <laughs> right. I, I thought the kid the kid had shown that he he's paying attention, knows what he's doing. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's looking very good, really, and. And it's a nice, nice improvement compared to what we've got. Okay. Yeah. So, and and it's not just 
you know, when we say, oh, is that just one tutorial? No, no, actually it's installing Jenkins in the Docker environment can show that as well. Here's how you do it with Docker Compose instead of this long, horrible sequence. And by the way, the Docker Compose thing converges Linux and Windows to use the same command. So instead of two entire sections in the documentation on Mac OS and on Windows, you just on both of them say Docker Compose up. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Yes. Any any other questions or concerns on Docker Compose? Nope. Oh, I've got one more Java eleven. 17 here i'll just copy it from earlier i've got one more topic that i want to be sure we include here and with the two of you here it's a good one for us to be sure that we cover okay good so docker compose next one is gitlab plugin modernization so here mark has lots to test yeah and i believe we're scheduled to meet meet in about what is it about 12 hours I think so, yeah. so i hope to have some testing to report then we'll we'll go forward and discuss there and then the weekend is here and i can spend some time testing okay plug-in health score uh adrian and uh so jagruti seems to be seems to be proceeding there's some concern there and they're discussing yeah. and seeing hey okay what's next how to help etc so okay. moving forward good okay anything else on google summer summer of code oh um, upcoming dates maybe right yeah upcoming okay. dates for the final yeah. evaluations and the presentation so it, final evaluation to... opens august 28 closes yep. september 4 right yeah Ah. Have we already done the midterm evaluations? Yeah, midterm yeah. evaluation, all four passed. Okay. Oh, that's probably why you were on vacation. That's why I didn't get updates and send elsewhere. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I don't remember. I, I definitely submitted my midterm evaluation. Okay. Chris, anything else on GSOC? Um, maybe the also the final presentations. So oh, wait. right, right. Yes, yes. Yeah, having them in mid-September, I think. Yes, very good. As post evaluations. Okay. Yeah. Anything else? Nope. Okay, next topic then was open pull requests of interest. Here we've got some, some kind of cool news. So Bruno Verachten... And I have checked, that is in fact how he pronounces his last name, Verachten, not Verachten. It's not German, it's French. Oh. And so Bruno, Bruno has implemented this feature that automatically updates, that automatically submits, submits pull requests, pull requests to update tool versions in the documentation. Oh. So, what we've got to look at is things like this. The one that I just tested, I've got to show you because this is really, this is a, such a nice capability because we were so erratic on doing, performing these types of updates. Yeah, they're so, a lot of work manually. Well, and and you've got to track them, et cetera. So <laughs> what Bruno submitted was, a tool used a tool actually authored by Olivier Vernon, so our free, former uh, infrastructure officer. And this tool lets it uh, submit pull requests to perform updates. And here's the one that I just merged. So the tool detected that we needed to change the Python version from 3.10.7 to 3.11.4. And it targets it on Alpine 318 and makes sure this is a valid container. Uh -oh. And I just ran through the entire tutorial using exactly this setup and it worked great. Oh, now this is a fun one. 
this is a dramatically better setup. Okay, this one detected a, a badly outdated Python. So Python 2 and correctly gave it a, a modern Python, a Python 3 version. Oh, that's cool. That, that actually is very cool. So, mm -hmm. and this is the tutorial that I, that, I, that I ran and that tutorial works great. Very nice. So a special thanks to Bruno for his work on, on update CLI, on using update CLI. We've got one open because we've this one proposes to increment the Node.js version, the Node, the version of the Node, but it proposes to change from using the long-term support release to using their, their most recent release. And Damien Duportal suggested, hey, we should probably stay on this one with, with their LTS because we don't do enough validation and we certainly don't have automated tests that tell us if these tutorials still work. Yeah. So choosing LTS for this one when they have a concept of LTS is probably better. Although it might be good to find out if there's a reason for that. Well, and and that's that's a that was okay. You just voiced what what my thought was, but I think the more I've considered Damien's suggestion, the practical problem here is this thing could update every month. And if we don't test it, we have broken tutorials. Whereas uh -huh. if it stays on LTS, it updates every three or six months, and the odds of things being broken are much less. Right. But that, but okay, what actually what decides what version it's going to use of something? I mean, is that is it doing that itself? It or will, is so, somebody going in and saying, you know, this is what we should use for this? Yeah. So what I think what what update CLI will be taught is use something that has a base of 18 dot and then only increment the things after the 18. Ah. So if there were an 18.17, it would it would choose it. But 19 or 20, it would not choose because those are not LTSs. So the, the initial configuration, at least that's how Dependabot works. You, uh, you yeah. tell it, I don't want things for to go any higher than this. Okay. Because then, then, yeah, the one, I don't know, the one concern is once in a while, you get something where the LTS has a security problem and there's a later release that's not LTS, it's just security feature fixes for that other one or something. Yeah, and if, if yeah. that occurred, then their LTS users have something that has a known vulnerability and that's that would be rather uncommon. Yeah. I, I would expect just like Jenkins LTS, when, whenever we patch a weekly for security fix, we also patch LTS. Okay. So that would be the 18 point something would be. Exactly. 18.16.5 would be released if dot four had a, had a bug, had yeah. a security issue. Great. So but I hate so, to disagree with Damien. So <laughs> a very wise choice. That's good. He's, I like his ideas. So that that looks really, really quite good, actually. I'm I'm truly thrilled. That is next, a nice piece. Next topic on the pull requests of interest is this Kubernetes outline from Tanush Sharma. And right now there's been no additional, no additional progress on it. We've given our feedback and Tanuj has has not been back to it. So we've there have been four or five commits that I did, that Kevin Martins did of things we thought would help but needs needs tanuj to come back before it 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 gets more time yeah anything else on open pull requests of interest oh. okay so next piece and chris this one for you as as in your role as release lead um i started a conversation with the release officer with all the Jenkins officers and the board using this document as my, oops, let's do it this way. Using this document as my framework. So the concept here is that Java 11 will reach end of public support in October of 2024. 
right? So Tamarin, the version, the platform we use is October. Red Hat, also October. Microsoft actually ends theirs in September of 2024, whereas Oracle will go all the way to October of 2026 if you pay them. Uh -huh. And Amazon Coretto will go to 2027 and you don't have to pay them. So there's there's a range, but we're based on Temerin. And so my proposal to the board and to Tim Jacome and to Damien and to Kevin Martins was, let's declare that the Jenkins project will stop supporting Java 11 when Temerin stops supporting it at the end of October 2024. And they were generally receptive to that. They said, yeah, that makes sense. That follow, that's consistent pattern. Then the next proposal was let's enable a Java 11 end of life admin monitor during October so that of 2023, so that people who are running weekly have a little over a year of warnings that, hey, Java 11 will reach end of life for the Jenkins project in October of 2024. That would then mean it will appear in the December LTS 2.426.1 or 27, whatever number it is. Any questions so far? Mm -mm. Sounds reasonable. Okay, so then the, the next piece of the story is, okay, what do we do about upcoming releases? We've got Java 21 coming in September of 2023. So just about six weeks from now, Oracle and Eclipse and Red Hat and Amazon Coretto and Microsoft will all deliver their builds of OpenJDK 21. And the the this end of support for them commonly goes as far as 2028 and potentially even beyond. So Eclipse said, hey, we'll support it till 2029. Red Hat says six years, 2029. So the proposal that I made was let's plan to release a Jenkins weekly version that supports Java 21 before the end of October 2023. And Basil Crow has agreed to do infrastructure work or not infra, to do core and tooling work if necessary. Damien and the infra team have agreed to do the, the work on infrastructure and Kevin Martins has agreed to review and write documentation changes as needed. Any concerns from either of you on that plan? Sounds good. Yep, no concerns. Okay, then the next piece of the, the proposal was Java 17, where here we'll start active promotion, encouraging people to go to Java 17 because Java, the Java 11 end of life admin monitor will appear in October and we want to move people along. Okay. Uh, now, if we look at the picture, here's the picture of the current picture of JVMs by Jenkins version. The green line that you see going up and then coming down is Java 8. The red line going up and continuing upward is Java 11. And this purple line here with now something like 20 or 25,000 installations is Java 17. So huh. even without the admin monitor, we're already getting adoption of Java 17, but our, we would like to dramatically improve this and start tapering Java 11 off. Yeah. And then there was one more question from, from Damien Duportal. What about Java 8 in our Jenkins infrastructure? Java 8 is already not supported by Jenkins, but we keep it Java 8 in the infrastructure because old plugins still need to use it to build. We don't want to break their build process. Okay. And what of oh, the status quote? So the proposal was, hey, let's maintain the status quo by continuing Java 8 updates until Java reaches end of life. Java 8 reaches end of life. In October 2026, OpenJDK will stop delivering versions. Uh, the other is if there were to come a time when Java 8 updates became just too painful for the infra team, they could tell us and we'd drop it then. 
this is just for tooling and just on Jenkins infrastructure, Jenkins still does not support Java 8 and will continue to not support Java 8. Okay. Yeah. Any concerns on any of those? Yeah, I would. I mean, I'm wondering about any plugin that by what two and a half years from now or something is still using Java 8. Is that going to pass the health test? Uh, good, good question. So the plugin health score actually sees that already today. So if we were to look at the plugin health score, we can, we let's search for, what should we search for? How about Git? We'll search for plugins related to Git. And here we see a plugin called Git parameter with a relatively lower health score. Let's see if I can find one even worse. How about GitHub organization folder. This is a, a good one because it's also a deprecated plugin. Okay. So we see here that on its score, it's got what are some of its negatives? It's got oh yes, here you go. Jenkins version 1.642.3. That oh tells God. us it's wow. Java 8 based. Uh -huh. And so it's already being scored down. It's already having its plugin health score decreased because it's using Java 8. Yep. And then the <laughs> other things that are diminishing its score here are part of the fact that it's it's just not maintained. And this one is not maintained because it's deprecated. Uh huh. Okay. So if we were to look at its page on the plugin site, you see this big deprecated bar at the top. Yeah. Yeah. So did that answer your question, Meg? Yes. Nice. Nice. Okay. So plugin, I I I'm thoroughly, I'm really thrilled with plugin health score. It it is a, a very nice addition that Adrian has done for us. Yeah, if I don't look at anything other than the health score, but I see that, you know, those lower numbers, I might want to think twice as you know, we used to have all this mealy mouth look and see if anybody's maintaining it. And the, right, right, exactly. You know. And so what we've done is we've he has codified checks to see those things that we used to say, please check to see if there's a maintainer, please check to see if there are a bunch of bugs reported against it. Please check all those things. And when you when you go to the health score, it will tell you these, oh yeah, there's a reason it got a 44 out of a hundred. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, or, or, okay, there's a reason why this one got a 98 out of 100, right? And it shows you, hey, look, here are the positives. Here are the things that are, aren't as good, but didn't diminish its score. Yeah. Good. Okay. Anything else on the Java story? Good work, good work. Okay, last topic on the agenda was DevOps World Tour. I am pleased to announce that I am speaking. Mark is speaking Ooh. At, in New York hey. uh, and in Chicago. And what is Mark speaking about? Um, the talk topic that was approved is... Um, Let's see how I got to remember the exact title. I just was was creating the slides. I, so it should be right on my mind. <sighs> Business benefits of open source contribution. Oh. And so I'm going to talk to people about why their business will do better if they will intentionally choose to contribute to open source. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's a it's a fun sort of controversial, really. You're telling me I can I can improve my business by giving things away, and the answer is absolutely. Selectively giving things away can absolutely improve your business, uh -huh. and and, I, and I'll I'll talk some some reasons why, etc. I mean, it's a it it, <clears throat> it includes several stories from my life of highlighting. Oh, here's why we did this, and it was specifically because it was benefiting the business, and here's why we did this. So it, it's. It's got some of Mark Waite is um, old enough. Uh, Mark Waite is experienced enough to remember some things. Uh-huh. Okay. 
Any cool. other topics for, oh, one, one last topic. I'm out the week of August 14th. Are you okay if I just cancel this meeting the 18th or do you want me to see if somebody else could, could run it? I'm good. I'm good with this cancellation. Yeah. Okay. Consider the meeting canceled. Not the same without you. <laughs> All yeah. right. Anything else for today? Nope. Nope. Well, All we right. have some testing to do in the next 12 hours. Uh, yeah. So I've got lots yeah. to do. All right. Thanks, everybody. Take care. Thanks.